Yo, mic check, mic check. Yeah, here you go. Oh, nah, he, he over here. Yeah, I heard he got that hot new thing. It's called Switch. Let's get it going. Whoa, okay, sorry about that. Let's let's compose ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Skill Up here. What's happening? As you all know, well, not all of you, but many of you will know, Nintendo has just unveiled its new console, codenamed NX, and now revealed to be the Switch. So, what's the dealio? Well, you see in the footage on screen, the Switch is essentially a very high-powered tablet with detachable controllers that can plug into a TV docking station so you can play it there as well if you like. So it's part console, it's part handheld, it's part tablet, and yeah, it's actually proving to be fairly popular. The reception to it has been pretty damn good. If we look at just the like ratio on the video, it's already got about two and a half million views and only 0.003% of people chose to dislike the vid. It's getting fairly positive coverage from the uh, sort of mainstream gaming media. Uh, people generally like it and that's a good thing I think. Nintendo obviously had a very rough time with the Wii U. It was not a particularly great console, really flawed design and terrible marketing. So to see them come out the gate with something like this and to see it warmly received is a really good sign. So digging into some of the details of this, yes, this is a tablet. You can definitely expect it to be around the same power as current gen tech. So that's the current PS4, Xbox, one maybe a little bit less powerful but uh you know obviously that puts it significantly behind the next generation of consoles which are on the way see nintendo are sticking to their guns on this one with regard to their overall console strategy nintendo are not interested in having the most powerful console on the market they are not looking to compete with sony and microsoft they have their own different approach and i think that's a really important consideration that i guess kind of frustrates me a little bit when people talk about nintendo they're like oh when are they gonna take top spot when are they gonna rule the roost again you know when are they gonna take over our lounge room like they did back in the you know super nintendo days it's not like that anymore you know nintendo have their own strategy and it is not to be like the playstation or the xbox the central unit in your lounge room around which all sort of core gamers are aligned it's to be the sort of auxiliary system for those core gamers and it's to be the core machine for younger audiences more casual audiences and obviously for handheld audiences now this is a really probably a little known fact but like you know in western society the way we play games is very much about consoles and it's about pc right that's the way that we do it as westerners but in asia the handheld still is very very big business in particular in japan the handheld market is larger than the console market over there like significantly larger in fact uh, and obviously places like China and Korea also have a fairly strong handheld presence. So, you know, the idea that Nintendo continue to invest in their very successful handheld business, where they are in fact almost a monopoly power there, like the PlayStation Vita just didn't even feature into like the sales figures. It's a tiny blip compared to the Nintendo DS. The fact that they're going down this path is obviously really playing into their own strengths. The other thing, of course, that we need to talk about in all of this is mobile gaming, right? That's a huge force that's just taken Taken over everything right now and obviously Nintendo here are making their own sort of play or response to the rise of mobile gaming they are basically bringing to you a portable console you can take with you anywhere so if you wanted to play games on your phone you could do that but similarly if you're interested in bringing along your switch you could do that too that's up to you you know and that really works for a lot of people but it will especially work in Asia when Nintendo is strongest now one thing that I think is really important to call out is how much Nintendo is aligning themselves to third party in this now this is not the first time that Nintendo has gone on about strong third party support when they launched a console in fact they do it most times so it remains to be seen whether or not Nintendo actually deliver on this front what's happened in previous console generations is that during the launch window publishers are more than happy to put out games to test the water. And as the console either finds its feet or flounders, they'll make decisions based on that. And that's certainly why we saw a lot of third-party providers pull out of the Wii U because they could just see it going south really fast and they didn't want a bar of it. Hopefully this time Nintendo will launch strong, they'll keep that third-party support that they need and we'll be able to get a strong library of third-party games. What sort of games can we expect? Well, already we're seeing portable Skyrim on screen. That's, well, that was one game that was 
shown during the uh, the demo reel. That's pretty damn exciting. Uh, and outside of that third party, there's obviously very strong first party offerings. Uh, Mario Kart 8 was teased. A new uh, Mario game similar to, you know, Mario 64, that kind of, you know, 3D Mario, not the 2D platform style. Um, you know, a new Splatoon. There was a whole bunch of stuff that was mentioned in that video. So, I mean, hopefully Nintendo strikes that right balance where obviously they're going to be really strong and capable on the first party front, but hopefully they do enough to keep third parties interested in the long run. So will this work? Obviously, I don't know the answer to that. Anyone that claims to say, hey, this is save Nintendo or it's a genius move or Nintendo are back or Nintendo are doomed and this was dumb or whatever else, it's silly. It's really silly. There's, there's no way of telling yet whether or not this is going to be the right move. We don't know the price point. We don't know the battery life of the machine. We don't know what the full third party lineup is or the first party lineup. We don't know so much. And so to sort of decide now whether or not this is the right move for Nintendo is, uh, you know, is, is very much a premature judgment. However, I will say the stock market does not seem particularly interested in this. Nintendo shares fell 10% on open this morning after the announcement. And that's not a resounding uh, sort of endorsement, given the fact that their shares climbed ahead of this announcement. There was lots of anticipation building. The fact that investors are now dumping their shares is interesting. Now, absolutely, investors are not the best guess of what's gonna be successful or not in the console business. But uh, it's interesting to see that sort of professional view or that investor view of where this is gonna go. And right now, it seems like they're not particularly thrilled. Perhaps they do look at the rise of mobile gaming and think that, well, that's the way it's going to go. And maybe we don't need a handheld machine because everyone's going to be using their phones anyway. In which case, what does the portability matter? And then maybe look at the fact that, hey, this is a bit of an underpowered console compared to an Xbox or a PlayStation. So why would I buy this thing again? I don't know. That's, that's maybe what they're thinking. The flip side, which is what I subscribe to because I'm a bit of a Nintendo fanboy, is that I love Nintendo products and they're cool and they're fun and they just focus on good, clean, quality gameplay. Play, and that's so important in our industry. And so I don't care that they don't look the best. I don't care that it's not all the bells and whistles in terms of, you know, teraflops and RAM and all that stuff. I don't care. I just care about the fact, can I play a Mario game or a Mario Kart or Smash? And is it awesome? And if it is, then that's it for me. That's all it's about, you know? And if I can take that with me on the road, I'm probably not going to do that too much because I don't travel a great deal. But hey, it's nice to know that I could. Or maybe if I get older and I've got kids, you know, I can kind of just like hand them the console and play on that. They can play on the screen while I'm watching TV or whatever. So I could definitely see this working for families. It definitely works for younger people. It definitely works for those interested in handhelds, particularly in Asia, and it definitely works for Nintendo fanboys like myself. So I am optimistic. I think it looks cool. I don't know whether or not it's going to be a success. All I know is I'm going to be buying one. I'm looking forward to it. I'd be really interested to hear your opinions, guys. I ran a Twitter poll that uh, basically said that it was sort of three options. It was, uh, you know, like, do you like it? Are you a bit meh? Or, uh, or do you really hate it? And uh, and it's very much in the meh camp right now, you know, but my audience is very much male. It's very interested in like military sims, like the division and the like. So I don't really think that's a proper representative sample. That's definitely not the target market for this. So I'd be really interested to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think the Nintendo Switch, I was about to call it the NX, do you think the Switch is gonna work or not and why? Let me know guys. If you liked this video, do drop it a like and thank you for watching. Take good care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.